it's me, Jody Shaw, former employee of Smith College. For those of you who have been following my story, you know that it's been kind of a long time since I posted a video. It's been around three months. And that is because I didn't feel like I had anything really significant that I wanted to say. But I have some things that I would like to say now. For those of you who have watched all my videos and been following my story, you know that this is a big story. A lot happened while I was at Smith College, and I believe that the incident of July 31st, 2018, which was thoroughly outlined in a New York Times article in February, was pretty seminal to creating and nourishing an environment of racial hostility for everyone. And I believe it is this environment of hostility that not only allowed individual acts of discrimination to occur, but allowed them to flourish. One of these individual acts of discrimination that occurred against me was when I worked in the library. This incident involves a rap. So even though my story is a big one, and there are a lot of examples of discrimination that I have cited in my complaint with the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination, when my story became very public, the library rap seemed to attract a lot of attention. There were a lot of journalists and bloggers and people online who really focused in on that incident. They picked it out of the story and made it into its own story. So although I've made a video about what happened with the library rap, I feel like it's important to just go over it one more time. I started working in the Smith College Libraries in September of 2017 in a temporary position as an outreach and engagement librarian. I was hired in large part for my proven ability to create highly engaging experiences for library patrons. It was a dream of mine to work at my alma mater. And so I was thrilled when in the spring of 2018, a permanent position opened. I immediately applied for the position. Right around this time, I was handed a monumental task, which was to create a highly engaging, highly memorable library orientation for 600 incoming first year students to take place that coming September. The first year orientation at Smith is a pretty big event. It takes place over the course of several days, I think four to six days. And the library orientation is just one small part of that. So my first order of business was to get a slot on the schedule for the campus-wide orientation. And there's a person on campus who handles this, so I scheduled a meeting with her. When we met, she explained to me that she had the last slot on the last day of orientation in one of the large concert halls on campus. She told me that I could do the library orientation for the entire incoming first year class. Now, if I'm understanding correctly, this was an unusual proposal. Usually the library orientation takes place in a series of smaller classes. And so that's what I was expecting. When she offered me the concert hall, I was surprised and I was also excited, but this offer came with a caveat. She told me, this is a very long orientation for these students. It's the last day of orientation, it's the last slot, and although it's mandatory, it's very difficult to get them to attend. But I will give you this slot and I will give you this concert hall. I will rally my student leaders to motivate the students to attend your event if you promise to do something, quote, wild and crazy. You cannot get up there and do a boring slideshow about the card catalog. <laughs> Those were literally her words. I agreed to this. I didn't know yet what I was going to do, but I said yes. So as I left her office, I started thinking about what I might do. I have a background in music. I have a background performing in front of live audiences. And I asked myself, what is the best, most highly engaging, wild and crazy way to transmit a lot of otherwise very boring information to 600 exhausted first year students in a venue that was specifically designed 
to host musical events. I don't know about you, but the answer seemed obvious. Now, for anyone who has planned and executed a live event for 600 people, you know that this is no small task. I got to work recruiting and organizing a team of people. I submitted the budget to my supervisor. My supervisor was aware of what was happening and knew that a wrap would be the essential piece of this event. The dean of the libraries knew what was happening. I began working across campus with other people to coordinate all of the other logistics involved. I found and teamed up with some local musicians so that there would be live music to accompany the rap. And I got busy writing the rap. I worked on this not only during work hours, but after hours as well. And I worked on it fully intending for it to be successful because I knew that if I could pull this off, If I could do something this wild and crazy and actually have it be successful, I would be highly competitive for this permanent position that I had applied for, which just so happened to require somebody who was able to create highly engaging experiences for library patrons. So I was shocked when less than a week before the event was to take place, a new supervisor who had replaced my former supervisor entered my office and told me, you can't do the rap. I asked him why. He said, because you're white and it might be viewed as cultural appropriation. So I asked him, if I were a person of color, would I be able to proceed with this? I didn't specify what color, I just said person of color. So in other words, any person with a skin tone other than white. He didn't even hesitate. He said, yes. These statements were later memorialized in an email to me. I explained to him that I had agreed to do something wild and crazy in exchange for having this venue and this slot on the orientation schedule. He said, well, can't you do a slideshow? (laughs) I told him I was specifically asked not to do a slideshow. So he said, well, there's got to be something else. He said, I'll help you. Now, bear in mind the event on a Wednesday after Labor Day, and it is now Thursday or Friday. I'm thinking, I don't know how we're going to come up with something wild and crazy within five or six days, but I did entertain it. I thought, okay, uh, can you come in this and work this weekend? And he said, oh, no, I'm, I'm going to Montreal this weekend, but I'll be back on Tuesday, Tuesday being the day before the event. So clearly he was either not on the same page in terms of wild and crazy and what that means or simply was, did not have experience organizing events of this magnitude. So I contacted the person in charge of scheduling venues and I told her what had happened and I said this wild and crazy thing I was going to do I'm not able to do it and I explained why I said it's it's kind of looking like it's going to be a slideshow if we proceed because I'm not sure what else I can pull together before them that's uh wild and crazy she said let's cancel she didn't want to have to try to motivate all these exhausted first years to go to an event that was just going to be one more blah, blah, blah. Oh, also remember, I'm up for a permanent position in the library. And this individual, my supervisor, who had told me that I could not do this rap because I'm white, also happened to be the head of the search committee for this job I was up for. I won't get into all of the feelings and thoughts and just the complete emotional turmoil that I was feeling at this time because I've discussed that at length in a prior video about the library wrap. What I will say is that I ended up leaving the library because of this. I was scheduled to keep working at the library until December and I ended up withdrawing my job application and getting a position in residence life, which has its own story and where the racial hostility and discrimination continued. But now you know and 
can now consider yourself fully informed as to what exactly happened in Smith Libraries in August of 2018 concerning Jody Shaw and the library rap. Now, in regards to the journalists and bloggers and several individuals online who have come forward to let me and the world know that what happened in the library regarding the library rap was not so much about racial discrimination as it was about rescuing me from humiliating myself. So they have made the assumption that this event was to be a cringe fest. (laughs) And I'm wondering what they're basing that assumption on. If they're basing that assumption on the fact that I'm white or the fact that I am middle-aged perhaps, or that I'm a woman, perhaps a confluence of all three things. I don't know. But I did want to point out that that is a pretty big assumption when they have never actually seen the library rap. It is my hope that someday these individuals, in fact, everybody, will have the opportunity to experience the Smith College library rap. Let's keep talking.